The history of Danville is the history of its river. A river makes a town what it is, molds its life, and the life of its people, the kind of work they do and the kind of pleasures they enjoy. From the first beginning, the dam has made Danville what it is, for businesses were brought here or influenced in some way by the fact that a rapid little river made a horseshoe bend in a green and fertile valley. The Dan River region has been home to a variety of different people, all with different motivations, cultures, and lifestyles. All of these people have flocked to the river as a source of food, water, trade, and industry. However, the history of the Dan is cloudy. We often forget the existence of those who have come before us, whether it be from lack of records or lack of attention. We let the river of history run its course without thinking of the various tributaries and streams that have contributed to the greater whole. Today, high above the embankments of the Dan, stands the Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History, the only public institution dedicated to documenting and presenting the Dan River region's complete multifaceted history. Our museum is itself a physical manifestation of the complicated and contested histories that make the Dan River region what it is today. Prior to European arrival in the Americas, various groups of indigenous people who favored the fishing and trading opportunities that the river provided them occupied the valley of the Dan. Descendants of the Saponis, Tutelo, and Monican people are still present in the region today. Later, European colonists would arrive and settle along the Dan for these same reasons, bringing with them enslaved people and forcing the indigenous population further west. These early colonial population grew around Winds Falls, a varying point on the Dan River. As the tobacco plant grew into a tremendously profitable cash crop, so grew the colonial population, enslaved and free. Danville prospered as a market town for this important early trade. Hearth and home, Danville's gilded age of the golden leaf presents how the production of tobacco builds significant wealth for the city in the late 18th century. The museum is also home to the Schoolfield Textile Collection, which holds a legacy of American Southern textile. This collection offers a case study of Dan River Mills which informs a deeper understanding of how the rise of textile fueled segregation and white identity in Danville. Perhaps most famous among Danville's historical narratives, our current building is located at the former home of Major William T. Sutherland, where it served as the site of the last executive proclamation of the Confederate States of America. In our exhibit, Between the Lines, you can explore the development of the Confederate government and the effects of the Civil War on Danville and its residents, including how the city housed hospitals, prisons, and finally the president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. The exhibit explores the impact of the railroads and the roles of women and African Americans during this period of the city's history. Many of the artifacts in this exhibit and furnishings in the period rooms are supplied by the Kennedy Revel, Stratford College, and Wooding collections, featuring objects from Mabel Kennedy, Dean of Stratford College from 1930 until 1969, and Harry Wooding, a Civil War veteran and mayor of Danville, from 1892 until 1938. The museum has numerous portraits of Sutherland family members and prominent local citizens, most by renowned artist William Garl Brown, as well as two fine paintings by Belgian artist William C. A. Freerichs that belong to the Sutherlands. 
Almost a century after the Sutherland Mansion housed Jefferson Davis in retreat, the building's history once again grew cloudy. It played an important role as the stage for Danville's long struggle for desegregation. The museum became the location of Danville's whites-only Main Street Public Library. For almost 80 years, Danville's African-American citizens had faced the injustices of Jim Crow following a racially motivated massacre perpetrated by white citizens, but dubbed the 1883 riot, African Americans had been excluded from leadership positions in government and had their civil liberties significantly curbed by local segregationists. In 1960, African American students began a series of sit-ins to desegregate public institutions in the city, using the old Sutherland House as their vehicle for change. Three years later, in the summer of 1963, Danville's African-American citizens engaged in a series of marches through the main streets of the city. Bolstered by the Danville Progressive Christian Association, an affiliate of Martin Luther King Jr.'s Southern Christian Leadership Conference, as well as the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Danville's African American residents stood up to the local authorities and demanded equality. The movement, Danville's Civil Rights, is an exhibit outlining the bravery and leadership displayed by the movement's participants and documents the violence and legal resistance they faced for their actions. In retelling these histories and more, the museum features exhibits on the Civil War, Danville's tobacco and mill industries, the Civil Rights era, and famous Danville residents, Wendell Scott, Archie T. Gammon, and Emmett and Edith Gowan. The Hall of Fame was established by the museum in 1974 to recognize and honor citizens of Danville and Pennsylvania County whose achievements have been outstanding. Danville native Camilla Williams revolutionized opera and shattered racial barriers as the first African-American woman to receive a contract from a major United States opera company. In the Jennings and Schoolfield galleries, you can witness the glamour and excitement of an international opera diva's experiences and explore her life from her years in Danville to her civil rights activism and eventual transition into her role as a beloved mentor. The museum also serves as the region's premier art museum and holds an extensive 20th century art collection. While nationally and internationally known artists are represented here, the museum's collection focuses primarily on regional artists including an impressive selection of works by Carson Davenport and Harriet Fitzgerald. Regional artists Paul Bond, Jane Appleton Bond, Maud Gatewood, and Robert Marsh comprise part of the later 20th century collection. The museum continues to add to its collection due to the generosity of patrons and exhibiting artists and displays works from the collections on a rotating basis. Today, the Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History prides itself on its tradition of inclusivity and seeks to reflect the histories of all who currently call the Dan River region their home. If history is a river constantly changing, then it is perhaps up to us to decide the future of Danville's legacy. To achieve this task, we invite you to join us and discover for yourself the conversations started by each collection.